Okay, so today is June 13, 2019, and this is the Council on Aging meeting. So I'm calling it to order, and I see that there's no one here from the public, so we won't have any public session at this point. And hopefully people got a chance to review the minutes of the main meeting. Oh, and I want people to silence their phones, and also if you're recording this meeting yourselves, let me know because we do know it's already being recorded in, in CTV. Okay, so the minutes, I'd like to uh, hear a motion about approving the minutes for the last meeting, May 16th meeting. Anybody want to make a motion? I so motion. Second. Um, I would like to note that my name has two M's and an A. But I it's not a big deal, but it's just for future for Oh, future okay. Minutes. So in the review yes. of approval minutes from <laughs> okay. the previous meeting it's spelled wrong. Oh yeah, it's, it's spelled out yeah. right correctly on top. Okay, we'll mm -hmm. so noted. You get two different ways in the same minutes, not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a twin sister? <laughs> <laughs> And any other changes people can say? I do remember that Deb Epstein made some suggestions about having name tags to identify people at, um, at events here, you know, at the board, people who are on the council. Um, can you hold that until we finish with the minutes? Or did you want to add that to the minutes? It was last was time that she said oh, okay. So I didn't know whether, I, is that like not, I, I don't know what level of minutia has to go in the minutes or not. I said not a lot. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily have to go in then. Right, we don't include everything yeah, that okay. is said. Yeah. We we include what we have to include right. according okay. to open meeting law. Yeah, okay, um, good. But we did discuss it. Yeah. And um, we, did, we did talk about that being appropriate for some things and not for right. others, maybe. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're good. Okay. That one ch changing Jean's name correctly, and, and we could, you know, we can discuss again name text this meeting. Okay, so all those in favor of approving the minutes from last time with the one change, say aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, abstains. Okay, it passes. So, any announcements anybody has this time? I, I made a little announcement about the Green River Festival. If anybody wants a schedule, there they are. That's, I, I left them out in the foyer to music for entertainment. Okay, here are no other announcements. Old business. So we could we could talk old business. We could talk about the name tags. We had said at the last meeting when Deborah mentioned that that. There are name tags for some of us. It's just a matter of getting them okay. for all of us. Mm -hmm. There are name tags in the, there's a box in, at the front desk that has, alphabetically has name tags for mm -hmm. people, but I don't think anybody made them for more recent members of the board. Those, those are just like for volunteers. It's not just us, no, right? No, no. It's about, well, volunteers, the board members. We're considered them. volunteers. Oh, of just stuff. I didn't know if there were like volunteers who had names when they yeah, come in to do stuff or yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So the answer is yes, not no. No, but they are not just not just volunteers. I mean, it's, well, board, it's board volunteers. Yeah. It's for everybody. I mean, everybody. Where board members are considered volunteers. I will revise my question. Okay. What's in the box? <laughs> okay. <laughs> name tags for volunteers and board members because there's one in there. For me. Oh, okay. but that's what was confusing. It's not for everybody yeah. that so comes that's in the place. The, name, we the name tags that volunteers wear, we, they wear them only when they are in their role as a volunteer. Right. They don't wear them all the time. Correct. And then board members might wear, want, we might want board members to be identified in some kind of event so that people know that mm -hmm. they can be approached. But uh, okay. You don't, every time you walk in the building, you're not going to put on your board right, member right, ID right. because you yeah. might be here to do something else. And I think that also you might want to have <clears throat> some say about when people are approaching you. Um, but also we want to decide, and I said this last time, I think okay. we want to decide when 
when do we want to encourage discussion around certain things? Um, and I think that board members also are council members, I should say. Yeah. Like it says in the bylaws that um, it has to be voted upon here when someone is going to go out into the community as a representative of the council, like that they're going to talk about something. Like you talk about, we, we, you don't just automatically take it upon yourself to do something without it being kind of a decision, right? You're not going to go right. out and solicit funds or something without it, you know what I mean? So I think that it should be business that's decided upon here that, that triggers that unless you are at a function where board members are requested to be wearing a name tag. Yeah. Michael? In addition to what you said, it also seems that more recent council members might not have name tags. Mm -hmm. How do we get them? Right. We'll, we'll just put in a request for somebody, I don't know who may Linda can take time. care of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't even know if I have, I don't, where is this box? It's right at the front desk in the corner, the, the far corner from where we are oh, here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Basically, when you go to the when you go to the desk, you can just ask if you can. Have oh, okay. But but again, I think that we would decide here to bring right. the when? box of board member name tags so that everyone could wear it because we decided here. Like at the volunteer luncheon, yeah. we would wear yeah. our yeah. name tag. Yeah, because we'd be saying here like when you're. Could you please come and could you wear your name tag so people can talk to right. you? <laughs> they know to talk to you. Got it. If you um, volunteer here, you would also get mm -hmm. a different name tag? Yeah, because it would define your role. Okay. So it might say that you're the <clears throat> you know, you're the designated letterer opener volunteer, you know, whatever it says, you know, that it says what your job is. Really? Yeah. Okay. Mine just says volunteer. It doesn't say cost you shop or anything. Right, but that day you're the volunteer, and because you're in the coffee shop, people know that you're a volunteer, right? When, when oh, yeah. we do, well, I when we say coffee shop volunteer, just says volunteer. Okay, well, I guess what I'm saying is, um, we we when we're sort of onboarding volunteers, right. that all that stuff gets gone over. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So new business is the election of officers, and I need to step out of my role and hand it over to Cindy to do that part, because I cannot be a part of it since I'm running. So we have the slate of officers, it's actually the, mm -hmm. um, our existing officers, Jerry Ann has agreed to um, seek re-election as our chair, Dennis is vice chair, and Kathy is our secretary clerk. So we entertain a motion to accept this slate of officers for the next year, correct? I move that. A second. A second. Any discussion? Any additional nominations from the floor? Point of order. Do we have a quorum? Yes. Okay. I checked that out earlier. Okay. We have eight members in our 13 in our group. Okay. So I have a motion and a second, no additional nominations. So all in favor of the re-electing our slate of officers for the coming year, say aye. 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 Any opposition? Abstention, because I'm running. Oh, you can vote for yourself. Okay, then I vote aye. <laughs> How was that? Or me. Because it would still pass even if we abstain. Or you. Or you. Or you. Okay. So thank you. Well done. Congratulations, guys. And thank you, Nadia. Thank, thank you. Thank you for thank you doing that. Yeah. Back to you, Jerry. And it doesn't look like there's anything else on the new business agenda for today. So we'll go right into Kim's report, Assistant Director's report. Great. Thank you, everybody. Um, just to highlight a couple volunteer opportunities that we currently have. Uh, we do have some openings in the coffee shop, um, certainly uh, Monday mornings as well as Tuesday afternoons. We have met with a few new volunteers that we might be able to put into those time slots, but um, coffee shop is an ongoing place where we have some uh, volunteer needs. Also, reception. We'd love to have additional people join us at reception to help us welcome uh, patrons as they come in and provide information. The other places are 
dispatch to help set up medical appointments as well as medical transport drivers. So if transportation is anybody's forte or passion, <laughs> let them know to reach out and we'd be happy to get them connected. And lastly, I'd mention the Chronicle as well. We're looking for some writers, people to assist with the Chronicle. Um, so if you're mm -hmm. good writing articles or <laughs> helping us out on that way, editing any of those pieces, let us well, know. Or, I don't know or if you want to mention a I mean, bit more on that, Marie. Prose or poetry, I just think adding more content, period, like, and they don't have to be seniors. I think that maybe if it's something that, about something that would be of interest to seniors, um, you know, I think that people are all of all ages are writing about things that would be of interest to our readers. So we just, we just, we really do need some more writers because we've lost quite a few from two, like going back to work kind of stuff. So. <laughs> Or taking care of family members, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, Lou, is Lou and uh, Suzanne still volunteering? No. no. Oh. Yeah, not a while. Yes. Um, I know that some of those, and I'm aware of those from our last discussions, are like a block of time because it's the reception you have to be able to count on things. I have been talking to just different people about some volunteer opportunities like, like that saying well it could just be three hours one day a week you know whatever but like let's say reception work. Um, some people I've talked to that were interested in uh, medical transport the question was do you have to commit the same thing or is it totally flexible can you say mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, do you have to commit to a three-hour window, or how, how does that work? I didn't know enough On to call. Know. <laughs> I right. told them to call to, I don't know if they did, to say call to find out, but I didn't, I didn't sure. know, but so I was just wondering for myself. Sure. Uh, Jennifer Carberry would be the best person to talk yeah, to. I'm She's the one that coordinates them, yeah. but the way I understand that she works it is she lets all of the medical transport drivers know when a trip is, is oh. needed or when a ride is needed, and they respond and say whether they're able to do it or oh, not. Okay. So, and Jerry, and I don't know if you want to add anything to that either, but it, it, it is really based on availability, so it's not necessarily set hours on a set day. It's not a huge commitment other than you might get called a lot if we're short on medical drivers. <laughs> you might get called every you know for every ride if mm -hmm. there's only three people. We do need more. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't get called. I mean, I think you're asking for a dispatch people. No, no, both. no. Both. Oh, both. Okay, both. Okay. Both. For, yeah. The dispatch person calls the, the dis volunteers, right? The dispatcher is actually the person that helps set up the rides, yeah. coordinates right. with the right. patron, and schedules those. And that those. would probably need a block of time. Uh, that is a, yes. Yeah, so yeah, right. But the medical transport. The driver, yeah. yeah the, to being a driver, you don't get called. She sends out emails and tells mm -hmm. us daily what drives are needed. Mm -hmm. And then we pick and choose. Mm -hmm. We email her back, mm -hmm. and we get assigned. So she emails us back. It's all by email. She signs the so drive that's to daily us. daily or weekly? She, she puts it out every day oh, so okay. because dri drives come in every day. So people request come in. So it is total flexibility. Mm -hmm. So they yeah, can yeah. say, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, my lunch was canceled. I think I can do this. So people could do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah but you could say I'm going to be away that week, so I can't take any rides that week. Right. Or I can, you know, oh. you can also say, like, I'm only available on Thursdays, and mm -hmm. she'll send you right. lists. Oh, that's that good. Because that was the. There are people who can do blocks of time, but there are other people who are like, I like my flexibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. this is very flexible. You know, mm -hmm. But it's not on a, I mean, it's very rare that she's looking for somebody to drive the day that she's looking. So that's right. The people give up two days' notice. So the email leave. goes out, it might be two days yeah. from now. I mean, the other day she did send something out and say someone canceled. She sent it out the day before and said the driver can't do it. Is any, any of you drivers can do it. Mm -hmm. okay. And it got picked up, so it was taken. But it's mm -hmm. it, you, you're given notice. Like there, there are drives for next week that I can pick and choose to fit my schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. It's, that's, it's very, that's the most flexible thing. That I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, really yeah, the yeah, question. Yeah. Between the application process and the Cori check, how long does it take to become a volunteer? It depends. The Cori check moves pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. We also ask for two references, so sometimes that's the longer piece. You kind of 
play phone tag <laughs> with people sometimes. Um, for the medical transport drivers, we also do need some additional information as well. So that one does take a little bit more uh, to p have people on board and, and trained and get that information in place. And they have to have, is the insurance covered by the center or is it uh, by the personal automobile that they're transporting? Mm -hmm. It's covered through, it's covered through your own insurance. Through your own insurance. Mm -hmm. But I think also one of the reasons Kim makes announcements here is, is so that you can tell your friends and mm -hmm. people that ask you or questions or whatever that you can encourage mm -hmm. them because mm -hmm. really we put we did put it in the Chronicle last month and I got two calls for writers and I got I don't know if Jen got any applicants for driving but I've been putting it in the constant contact mm -hmm. also and I think sometimes people really need that personal invitation to volunteer. Mm -hmm. It's not always something that they, um, you know, they, they think, oh, maybe I'll do that sometime, but when someone tells them about their experience of doing it and how great it is or mm -hmm. how, much, how rewarding it is to help people get to their medical appointment, that's really what I think makes the difference for people. And it can be quite a commitment when you choose a drive because I stay with the person if they want me to stay with them. I'll go into the doctor's office with them if they want me to sit there and wait for them. Or they'll say, go, go shopping and come back in such an hour or something. So there's, there, there could be a three-hour block that you're taking up. So. Mm -hmm. Even if you say, I only have time to do one person today. But they could be there for three hours. So yeah. they could be there for an hour, or they could be there for yeah. three hours. Mm -hmm. Well, it t you know, going and getting them taken to the place, and so, so say two hours or three hours, depending on how yeah. prompt I the mean, doctor is to right. do that right. deal or right. 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 But it's usually a block of time. You know, you take mm -hmm. a, right. It's not just a drop off. Most right. of these people are not taking the van because they can't use the van. They want to get into a car. Uh, so you have to be a little more available to the to helping them. Right. Not always, but. And, and I think there's some kind of coverage through the city, if I'm not mistaken. You have to have your own coverage. But I think the city has some protection. Well, there, yes, but it's, it's a secondary, it's right. a secondary thing. Yes. Anything else, Kim? Okay, great. Uh, just a quick update on the focus groups. Uh, the movie committee continues to meet on the last Thursday of the month, and they are continuing to pick the movies. Uh, the Arts and Culture Group, their next meeting is on July 10th at 2.30, and they're currently looking at evaluation of the programs that we have, uh, getting responses and feedback from participants, as well as uh, focus right now is on a handful of local artists and looking at potential uh, classes, workshops, anything from one-day workshops to a little bit longer series of classes. Um, so we've got some members of that committee, uh, that focus group, reaching out to some local artists. Um, the diversity and inclusivity uh, group is going to be tomorrow at 11 o'clock and prior to that at 10.30 we'd like anybody that's interested in the building upgrades outdoor furniture discussion um, to happen. We were hoping to do that last Friday but um, that will be this Friday instead. So we'll start that off at 10.30 and then do the inclusivity um, at, at 11 o'clock. So that's the update on those. And when you do meet with the inclusivity group, will you talk about maybe that would be a good thing to have to run the furniture by them? Sure. You know, sure. I mean, Certainly. because because sometimes if if you have um, a disability, that you know, it could you could have preferences. Mm -hmm. Sure. We had people for some of these committees, like um, the OT I used to work with was at Adaptive Design. He lives in Northampton now, and I think he'd be great to have these sorts of people with disabilities and older people. So I may just try and contact you or about the meeting. All right, thank you, Kim. Thank you. Now the director's report. Um, so I want to let people know that um, hired a programming coordinator. Uh, her name is Nancy Yezu. I think that's how she pronounces it. She'll be starting on Monday, um, which is a great thing. Um, and um, she has experience working in senior centers. So um, I will be easy onboarding, I think. Um, 
and uh, the other thing that I'm announcing is that Cam is actually leaving us. Excuse us? <laughs> Was it something we said? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Uh, yeah, she's got bigger fish to fry. I don't know. She's moving on to a, another opportunity, and we're gonna gonna miss her. So people can say their good, goodbyes to her outside of the meeting and off camera. But um, she'll be here till the 28th. So yeah. So we'll be we'll be trying to find someone to start as soon as we can. So because we've had a lot of up and down this year, but. Um, been lucky to have Kim, so. Are you able to share what your opportunity is or no? Well, I'd be happy to, but I'm, I'm we'll, we'll talk after the meeting. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, so, and we are, we are, you know, we are starting to work with the Gazette and we will be um, hopefully getting more things sort of launched in terms of our partnership with them um, and so we you know our our people will see more of our material and our information in more of their publications so we should be getting um, sort of a broader broader um, uh, view basically of people of all ages will in the, the newspapers and we're just going to have a lot more support around our marketing and publication so i think um that's that's an exciting development and then um, th there's some programs this summer that are kind of taking a hiatus and there are some that are launching so you know there's new stuff and um sort of there's a lull in some ways in some areas but i think that um there's just sort of a seasonal there's more of a seasonal kind of feeling to some of the the patrons and the programming that's going on here um, and um, let's see we've got some exciting stuff planned for the fall too and we are actually um, going to be modifying transportation that's offered over the summer just sort of cutting back a little bit because there is a kind of a less less use of the van um, and then we'll be assessing not only assessing programs um, on multiple levels um, where we'll, we'll get input on these working groups too from everyone but um, looking at the sustainability of the transportation program going forward like how we can sort of optimize on the resources we have and sort of minimizing the staffing costs. So I'm, I'm really looking at that because the staffing cost is the biggest part of the expense. And it, it, it breaks down to almost $22 per person per ride. So almost 20, you know, 40, $42 um, or $44 round trip per person. You do have for less money which is not sustainable. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at how we're going to maybe build some more sort of grassroots kinds of initiatives. So really recruiting more drivers, encouraging uh, carpooling, um, streamlining some of the way that we're providing services rather than having one or two people riding around the van on the van at a time. Like really doing more sort of direct service with volunteer drivers. Um, you know, we are really <coughs> lucky to have all the resources we have um, here, and uh, I think that in some ways, you know, I, I was at the EOEA Formula Grant training yesterday with a lot of directors, and um, you know, I think there's there's so many ways to do things and to expand services with very little funding you just have to um, be willing to to try those things and to, to do the work to recruit the labor force um, from volunteers so um, that's that's kind of where I, I i did have more resources in williamsburg than a lot of small towns did but but we really had to be creative so um 
but there are also things happening on a bigger level, which is, you know, PBTA is starting to offer some free transportation for seniors, and they're trying to address the issue, too. Um, so there'll be, you know, there'll be many layers to the process of kind of whittling down what's going to be the best solution, but we are not going to take transportation away. That's the important thing to remember. Um, and, um, and then I think the summer will be a really good time to be um, looking at the comfort here too. And so the gardening aspect, like I met with the Conway School of Design landscapers and we're planning a, a forum to get public, to get patrons input on and get people involved in working on the outdoor space design. Um, and the city's actually thinking about putting in the electric assist bikes down here. So we'll have, you know, there'll be many really good good improvements, I think, going on. So um, one other, did you, we want to comment on something I've said? Oh, no, just a question, well, just a question on the medical rides. Has there been, like when there was, you know, said one or two, say people on the van, which raises the cost, mm -hmm. has there been a decline in ridership? Or, I mean, did the van used to be used more? Or No, there is actually a growth in ridership. Mm -hmm. It's really just that. The model. So the model is that we take you when you need to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. we, we staff almost 60 hours of staffing time and so I, I think that people we what we're going to need to look at is ha um, maybe having less hours where we fill certain needs and we staff those hours and there'll be more people on the van during that time oh, okay. and how we use the vans and how we're getting another vehicle this month um, that's more um, that's that's more of a more green um, a little more efficient um, so, you know, there, there are lots of things that I'm looking at in terms of um, making it more green, making it more sustainable, and making actually, I believe, and I, I think I'll stick to this till, I, till I'm old myself, I don't want to get on a van. <laughs> I don't want to get on a van and go to a medical appointment when I'm old. I, I, I think that people want that one-to-one. -one. Well, they want that one to one. Van. I mean, if you can, if you can get a car, but some people because of um, disabilities can't get into a car. No, so people with disabilities will have to continue yeah. to use mm -hmm. the van, and so we may prioritize it in that way. Oh, yeah. But I think that we are going to be looking at um, how can we best serve people with the resources we have, mm -hmm. and um, so we may start to prioritize the use of the van for mm -hmm. when it's really it's needed. needed. Yeah and for group outings and we may move more towards one-on-one -on -one rides for people because then you can address multiple needs. You can take someone to a lab after. You can pick up a prescription. <coughs> that's not really reason, that's not really feasible on the van and um, see I, I guess I was just and this I just didn't realize I thought that vans were just, the van was just used for people who weren't able to use regular transportation. I didn't realize that you just take one person who can get into a van but it just could be who also is able to use a car but because of the van you just give them a van. No, I mean we're using it for medical rights, we're using mm -hmm. it for grocery shopping, we're using it for errands. Right. Mm -hmm. We're using it. So um, mm -hmm. And PBTA handed over this part of the service because it's not sustainable. No, it's not. I mean, I, <laughs> so, I'm like shocked. I didn't realize that people, you know, you just use a van for anybody. Well, any senior that needs transportation. Oh, but I was yeah, thinking they you would get transportation from volunteers. That's a thing with their own car. That's what I thought. I guess I was wrong. Um, yeah. Do you see opportunities for any kind of coordination with Northampton neighbors, many of whom would have to do that too? Yeah, yeah, that's all going to be part of the equation. Mm -hmm. So I'll be, I know, I'll be looking at all of these things, and and I, um, we haven't made any major decisions yet, but um, so I just wanted to let you know that. Um, 
I, mean, I don't want to raise flags or anything. I, I, we are going to prioritize transportation. It's one of the biggest needs there are. So. Sorry. Yeah, I just had another, a couple of questions. So, just Chris left also, um, right? Chris Rodriguez. Said, yes. Yeah. Yes. So we um, we've had we've had some turnover in staff and mm -hmm. um, and Jeff also, right? The, um, so, yeah, um, we will we will um, be getting up to full staff soon. We'll be working on that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Kathy and I are going to, and I mean Kathy and Cindy and I are going to the Reimagining Aging Summit in Worcester um, next week. Next week. Um, so. And so, and the other, I just wanted because just just so that I have a better idea. <laughs> Yeah, obviously. So, who are the other? What are the other openings that that Kathy just Kathy just mentioned that there are two other people who left? What were the other openings? So, I'll be hiring some staff assistants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and janitorial is not my department. Mm -hmm. That is central services. So, they'll be hiring someone. Mm -hmm. So, one will be a, a, a and janitorial services, and yeah. one will be a staff assistant. Is that mm -hmm. what you're saying? Yeah, that's right. And, and then Kim. And an assistant director, yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be posted on the city. Mm -hmm. The city will be posting those. Uh, since you're going to have a new van, will there be a new driver? An extra driver? No. No, we have plenty of, we have a lot of drivers. And we, we will probably be using our less efficient van less often. Yeah, we can't afford to run. Uh, we do have two drivers on and two vehicles running often at the same time, but we won't have three running at the same time. Yeah. Um, just trying to think if there are any other things that I You mentioned some new programming in the fall. Can you give us a sneak preview of what might be new different? So um, September is Grandparents Month. So I've been talking with the school district um, and some other um, people who provide programming that's intergenerational. So I'm looking at that, um, trying to launch that for the month of September. Um, we coming up very soon though is the this the farmers market that will be on site here um, for 10 weeks and the cooking club that will be going on and we'll be really excited about that Kevin's gonna be doing a cooking club every Wednesday for 10 weeks and people who want to learn how to cook things that are coming from the farm um, will be helping create product that will then be for sale at the farmers market so people maybe you know they might they might want to buy pesto that's already made. So it'll help people who maybe don't want to cook or people who are afraid to eat some things and then want to try it. So they'll, they'll get to test it, and also get to taste it at the market. So that's been really effective. Um, we're working closely with Grow Food Northampton around this. Um, just making sure that um, you know people have the opportunity to taste something they've never cooked with before. And then they might be because you get to choose what you put in your farm share, um, you, they might be more wel welcoming of something like fennel. If they've never tried it before, they might say, oh, this is good, I like this, I'm gonna take it home and, I, and we'll be giving them the recipe. And, um, but they might also just not wanna shred a cabbage or make coleslaw. They might wanna pick up coleslaw already made or a quiche or a pesto or so we, so I'm, I think that it'll, it'll serve many different needs and it'll also just be nice to have all this farm fresh food. Um, and we'll also be pr uh, purchasing produce from the farm that he's going to be adding to the lunches over the summer, so that'll be a nice addition. Um, 
and there will be, you know, a, it will be free for people who are getting a subsidized farm share for the, the cooking club for a certain number of those, mm -hmm. um, and then it'll be open to other people for a small fee, mm -hmm. um, and it, they'll all go home with some of what is made in the cooking mm -hmm. club. So it'll it'll really be a nice social cooking in the kitchen together, um, and um, yeah. And did I read it correctly in the Chronicle that? Um, people like me can buy some of the vegetables. We don't have to have a farm. Oh, share. you don't have to sign up for a farm share. You so if you you don't want to commit to that month that many vegetables, like some people are overwhelmed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know? It has to yeah. be. Well, I know I I buy vegetables and then they just rot in my fridge because I don't have the energy to cook sometimes, and I just I feel terribly guilty about it. But I have oh, the intention oh. to eat those vegetables. Um, but with a farm share. Well, yeah, not everybody you can, can have a farm share. No, be mm -hmm. income eligible yeah. for the farm mm -hmm. share. Right, but you so can't. I can't buy a farm share. No, so this so is the thing: you can like buy me. a farm share. You just yeah. can't have a subsidized farm share. Oh, oh if oh, your okay. income doesn't right. qualify you. So this is the thing: maybe oh. you anyone can purchase a farm share. We're doing a small and a large. Oh. Anyone can. So this is a real market. You, mm. Anyone can go into the market and buy just a pound of broccoli if they want to, or five tomatoes, or whatever. So if you want to pick up something for your it's dinner that night, market, it's going to be open to everyone who comes here. And so we really want to encourage people to go to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to sell the runoff of you know what doesn't sell at the market in terms of the product mm -hmm. we're making. We will put it in the coffee shop, and people will be able to buy it there. Um, so I'm, you know, just really trying to work on bringing in healthier options and making them accessible. Um, whether it's that people just don't want to cook and it makes it easier, or that it's the cost of buying a quiche at the co-op is exorbitant. So you know, but maybe people will eat healthier if it's easier to to get. You know. What day is that going to be? Do you know yet? It's going to be on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. That's what it was last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty exciting. It starts next week? It starts July 11th, I think. Yeah. Or 10th. I no, think it was no, July 10th. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. Um, how much are farm shares without subsidies? So they're. There's a form at the front desk, mm -hmm. and um, there's a sliding scale. Oh. So basically, some people who can mm -hmm. afford more have said, you know, I'm willing to pay a little more so that someone else can have a lower mm -hmm. fee. So it's really like okay. um, there's a scale that mm -hmm. you can choose from, mm -hmm. um, which I think is great because, um, you know, then everybody benefits and all, everyone gets good food. <clears throat> Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think so. I my brain's a little fried today, but <laughs> I can't think of anything else. Um, um, so after we have this meeting about the outdoor furniture, I'm I'm hoping that we can decide whether we need more money or we're, that we're happy with that, and we can. So I'm hoping we get some input tomorrow because I don't I I want to I want to get it soon because it's nice now to sit outside. So um, if you if you come or you you tell someone else they should come, that'd be great. And could you say the time again? Ten thirty. Okay. Is that a focus group? It's a we're calling it a working group. Um, I guess I guess one other thing I'm thinking of is that because it's June, and I'll see you all again in July. But um, the funding for the building improvements, uh, the study, the study with the architect for the use of space that that can't start till July first, but. So soon after that, um, I'll be talking to the Central Services Department about getting that kick-started. Um, so that's exciting, too. And then we will be getting our money to do improvements around technical, um, 
technical upgrades. So we need a you know we need a new projector, um, things like that. So will this include more outlets like in, you were talking about in the coffee shop, for instance? If you come use the computers, there's not there's not um, adequate number of outlets for people if they want to plug in there. Oh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I will. Yeah, I've mentioned that. We'll talk to you about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I think we're done for the day. And so, anyone want to make a motion for adjournment? I have a motion. Second. Second by Kathy. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? Okay, we are adjourned. Can we turn off the camera?